The woodpecker is a perfect example of how evolutionism must be impossible. For starters, how does the woodpecker not get a concussion when each peck causes an impact of 4,000 Gs of force? And why don't their eyes pop out? More importantly, the tongue of the woodpecker is a testament to irreducible complexity. As Dr. Job Martin explains, Our tongue starts in the back of our throat, comes up and out the front. His tongue starts in the back of his throat, goes down the throat, comes out the back of his neck, up over the top of his head, it's under the skin, comes out a little hole between his eyes, goes in one of his nostrils, and then comes out of his beak. How could the woodpecker's tongue evolve from a normal tongue in gradual steps with each one being useful? The supposed scientists are scratching their heads, so why are they so confident that evolution is a fact? I had to investigate. Woodpeckers are a cladistic family called Picidae, which are known for using their own beaks to hammer into tree trunks to either gain access to food within the tree trunks or to store food in the tree trunks. If you've ever used a hatchet or axe to chop wood, you're aware that hitting a tree repeatedly with your face can cause a variety of damage. Although the woodpecker has developed a hard beak, its skull is comprised of a spongy type of bone called cancellous bone. This absorbs the brunt of the impact of each peck, protecting the brain. The woodpecker's brain, however, is also arranged in a vertical pattern instead of a horizontal design that we humans have. Along with a more tightly packed brain, this benefits the woodpecker by spreading the brunt of the force over a larger area. This is similar to the concept of a bed of nails. While a person can lay across the bed without harming themselves, doing a headstand might have far more grim possibilities. The most applicable concept that protects the woodpecker's brain, however, was illustrated by John Burden Sanderson Haldane in his 1928 essay on being the right size. You can drop a mouse down a thousand-yard mine shaft, and on arriving at the bottom, it gets a slight shock and walks away, provided that the ground is fairly soft. A rat is killed, a man is broken, a horse splashes. For the resistance presented to movement by the air is proportional to the surface of the moving object. Divide an animal's length, breadth, and height each by ten. Its weight is reduced to a thousandth, but its surface only to a hundredth. So the resistance to falling in the case of the small animal is relatively ten times greater than the driving force. This is an application of the squared cubed law, which is an essential concept used in engineering. In this case, the woodpecker is absorbing up to 4,000 Gs of force within one millisecond at the moment of collision with an average brain size of 2.745 cubic centimeters. A normal human being can only safely handle 300 Gs of force, but with a brain size of 1,400 cubic centimeters. With a cranial volume of less than 1 500th of a human brain, the woodpecker brain should be more than capable of absorbing this kind of trauma. Meanwhile, slightly larger upper eyelids are responsible for protecting the eyes by closing at the last second while packing, which helps keep them in the skull. The woodpecker's tongue is one of its more remarkable features, being notably longer than its head. It uses this tongue to spear prey that it finds within the trees it pecks, but the woodpecker's tongue does not enter the beak from above through the nostrils. Like nearly all vertebrates, the human tongue is mostly muscle that is anchored to a bony structure known as the hyoid process. Developing from the same second and third pharyngeal arches that become bronchial arches in fish, it is this bone and its proximity to the jaw that allows human beings to speak. You can feel your own hyoid by applying pressure through the top of the throat. This structure varies immensely in size across all species of birds, showing that every intermediate step has some sort of function leading all the way to early fossil species such as Archaeopteryx, which still retains a fairly theropod dinosaurian shape. In fact, a homology can be shown using this structure going all the way back to the most basal reptilomorphs. In woodpeckers, this bone makes up the majority of the woodpecker tongue. This hyoid goes around the back of the skull and in some species may even stretch to the right nostril, but it is not anchored there. It would be fairer to say that the woodpecker hyoid is anchored to the mouth by muscles which pull on it, causing the tongue portion to extend. The size of this hyoid varies from species to species, but in the English green woodpecker it begins much smaller in juveniles at about the same size as a chicken's hyoid, and over the course of becoming an adult eventually makes its way up the back of the skull, over the top, and settling within the right nostril. The cladistic family Picidae certainly has some unique features, but none of them are irreducibly complex, including the tongue. Tracing the homology and morphologies of these structures is another example of how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.